All right, welcome back. In the last video, or the last couple of videos, we figured out um, the distribution factors and the fixed end or free end moments um, for this problem. And now we're actually going to start doing the distribution cycle um, in the moment distribution cycle. So here I have this little chart set up. Um, I already plugged in our distribution factors and our fixed end moments. Now there's one special thing I added, and this that is this balance and this carryover moment balance. As you see here, this diagram has a a pin, I'm sorry, a roller at A and a, a pin at D. Therefore, roller that well, there since there's a roller at A, that means there is no moment at A. Rollers don't support moments, neither do pins. So the moments at A and D need to be equal to zero. But when we calculate these fixed end moments, we said, well, there was one negative 144 and there's 144. Uh, we said that there are moments there. So this balance column is used to get rid of those moments at A and D. So since this is a negative 144, we need to place a 144 here and since this is a 144 here at DC, we need to place a negative 144 here. Why? Because then the sum of the moments will be 0 here and 0 here. Now, each of these balances that we did still has a carryover moment. Okay, those need these 144s need to be accounted for when we start balancing joints B and C. So we need to carry over uh, 144, uh, half of 144 is 72, right? And then negative 72 would be here, right? Carryover moments are just the previous moments divided by 2. No sign change, okay? So now that we balanced, we've already, we're done balancing the moments at A and D, we can now just go to point B or C, start at either one, and continue distributing and and carrying over moments until our carryover moments are very very small and joints B and C are in equilibrium because right now they're not one for example one, uh, B joint B has one a positive 144 here and a negative 133 here they're opposite in direction but their magnitudes aren't the same so we need to do a moment distribution cycle this chart actually has seven cycles so we'll do all seven even though the carryover moment might be less than one early on we'll just keep doing them just for practice um, so we need to start at uh, let's just start at point B I'm gonna write this in red let's start at joint B and our first distribution remember it is you sum all the moments acting on joint B, so the moments on either side of the line, then you multiply that number by the distribution factor, and then you uh, flip the sign. So you sum the moments, multiply by DF, and then flip the sign. So for this distribution one, we're gonna do 144 plus negative 133 plus 72, times the distribution factor 0.455 should give us 37.58 and then you flip the sign and you should get negative 37.58 okay and on the right side you do the same 144 minus 133 plus 72 times 0.545 you flip the sign you should get negative 45.09 now at this point you you might say okay well let's carry over both of these moments um, so you'd carry over a moment here you'd carry over a moment here but since this is already balanced since span A is already balanced meaning it's already zero because it's a roller there we don't need to carry over a moment here so we can get rid of that arrow the only thing we need to carry over is this 45.09 so 45.09 carryover moments, remember, is your distribution divided by 2 is negative 22.55. And now we're at joint C. So for joint C, distribution 2, we're going to sum all the moments 
multiply it by the distribution factor, and then flip the sign. So the sum is 133 minus 144 minus 72 minus 22.55, all of that multiplied by 0.545, and you flip the sign, and you should get 57.39. And on this side, you should get 133 minus 144 minus 72 minus 22.55, all of that times 0.455, uh, and you flip over the sign, and you should get 47.82. Again, we carry over a moment, carry over a moment. But on this side, since D is already balanced, D was a pin, and therefore a pin... The, the pin there the moment there is already zero right because a pin doesn't have a moment we already balanced that we already took account for that you don't need to carry over a moment here so you just need to carry over this moment 57.39 you divide that by 2 you should get 28.69 okay so now we're back at joint B. So on the left side of joint B, again, you sum 144, 133, 72, 37, 45, 28. You add all those together. You multiply by 0.455. And then you flip the sign, and you should get negative uh, 13.04. And on the right side, you sum all the moments, multiply it by the right side distribution factor, which is 0.545, and you should get negative 15.65. Okay? And again, here, you don't need to carry over this moment because this, this uh, moment at A is already accounted for. It's already zero. We don't need to do anything to that. Uh, then you carry over this moment. Half of 15.65 is negative 7.83. And then for distribution 4, again, you sum all the moments about C. So 133, negative 144, negative 72, negative 22.55, 57, 47, and then negative 7.83. You multiply it by the distribution factor 0.545. You flip the sign, and you should get 0.4 or 4.27. And on this side, you sum all the moments, multiply it by 0.455. You flip the sign, and you should get 3.56. And again, you don't have to carry over the moment to D. So we just worry about the left side. So this 4.27 divided by 2 is 2.13. And here we can do the sum of all the moments once again. right? So sum of all the moments multiplied by 0.455 flip the sign and you should get negative 0 0.97 and on this side you should get negative 1.16 and you don't have to carry over a moment here you have to carry over a moment here and you should get negative 0 0.58 right 1.16 divided by 2 gives you 0.58 and at this point the carry over moment is less than 1 so we can stop right now but we'll just go ahead and fill out this whole chart just for practice so for uh, point uh, for distribution six, the cycle six, it's going to be the sum of all the moments times 0.545, which is the distribution factor for the left side of joint C. And you flip the sign, you should get 0 0.32. And on the right side, sum the moments, multiply by the right side distribution factor, which is 0.455 and you flip the sign and you should get 0.26 right you don't have to carry over a moment here because it's already done right you do have to carry over a moment here so this moment is 0.32 divided by 2 is 0 0.16 right and then finally the last distribution cycle on the left side of joint B you sum all the moments so 0 0.16 0 0.97 0 0.2 or 1.16, 2.13, and so on. Multiply it by 0.455. You flip the sign, you should get negative 0 0.07. Okay, on this side, you should get negative 0 0.09. You don't have to carry over a moment here because it's already zero here. Right? Here, you 
divide by 2, you should get negative 0.04. And we are done with the distribution cycles. Now, if we sum all the moments in each column, um, here we're going to get 0. Why? Because we are we the, the moment is in negative 144 plus 144 and then there's nothing on this column so it's just zero right for the second column you're gonna get 144 plus 72 minus 37.5 minus this number minus this number uh, minus this number and you should get uh, 164.34 this column you should get negative 164.34 sorry I should 164.34 this column you should get 164.31 this you should get negative 164.35 and this should be zero right um, so in the next video we're actually gonna look at the direct shear auxiliary shear total shear and then figure out the reactions happening on this structure all right, see you then.